All right, we now welcome on to the program a good friend of ours. He is the man behind Wegren Enterprises, our host site, Ricky Wegren. How you doing, Ricky? Hey, Bobby. How's it going? Good, man. We're glad to have you on. Uh, uh, as you know, we obviously always say, you know, presented by Wegren, we talk about them a little bit. Uh, Ricky is the guy who, uh, him and Josh, who runs social media, reached out to us and wanted to host our pop podcast, and things went from there. So uh, we're definitely appreciative of, of Ricky. Yeah, I'm glad to finally get on one of these episodes. I mean, you got C- Cody Latimer, a bunch of guys coming through. Glad yeah, to be in the honor of the high rankings for definitely, all these people. Definitely. Uh, we'll, we'll jump right into it. Yeah. Uh, when did you start Wagon Enterprises, and what was your thought when, uh, of what it could be? Um, so I guess it really goes back to when I was about a sophomore or junior in high school. Um, it was just me and my buddy. We were – we were kind of just these passionate Philadelphia sports fans, and it was kind of the time when Twitter and Facebook were catching on to the younger generations like that and everything. So we just saw that, like, it was this ability. You can make a big account, Facebook page, whatever it was, and you can kind of just do whatever you want with it, you know, just put updates out there and people could follow you. So we made these ones that were just kind of dedicated to the Philadelphia teams, Eagles, Flyers, Phillies, Sixers, and the Union. Um kind of it was just me and him really just putting out updates regularly we were such big fans at the time that it was updates were really going out just like that I mean we had nothing else going on but school and whatnot and then we were just it was kind of become more of a regular thing where it started turning into hey we have this friend who's interested in the Sixers and kind of just grew like that Um, and then it was no longer that we were just on the social media Facebook and Twitter kind of naturally progressed to where we're, we had this following of it was getting to about 50,000 just on social media alone. And it's just like there has to be more to this than just being on social media. You know, we have to have our own stuff. So kind of created our site from there. And then the rest is kind of history from then on. But that's kind of the beginning of it. All started on social media, you know, just clowning around how everyone kind of starts their things nowadays. But yeah, definitely. Um, now, one of the suggestions we had in the beginning, mm-hmm. have you ever just uh, contemplated changing it to We Grin? I mean, I know it's your last name, but We Grin, it, I mean, it just kind of is a little more smooth. You, you got this almost, yeah, almost, like, almost I mean, like a catchphrase, Ricky. <laughs> I'm all for it. I mean, I know, <laughs> I know how my name is pronounced, but wh- however people want to pronounce it works for me. <laughs> I mean, na- if the name is out there, that's all I'm happy about. So, <laughs> however definitely. Said, you know. Definitely. Um, so obviously that first year was kind of, you know, beginning phase uh, when you, you and your buddy started it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what would you say is the biggest change from like the first year of, of, of it to today? Um, I would have to say, I guess. So I when I went to school at uh, Loyola University, Chicago um, in 2014, when I was starting there, it was just kind of. I had this transition period where I was doing the Philadelphia stuff still. It was, I was going from high school to college. So it was kind of something that was keeping me grounded at the time. And then um, also it was just kind of like, all right, what's ahead of me at college now? Like I, it's a whole different environment. Don't, I didn't know anyone going to the school at the time. So it was kind of like flight or fall, you know? So I had the, I kept going with Philadelphia, but my other friend had kind of just fallen off at the time. So it was just me doing it with kind of how I was going about it. We had the system in place, like I mentioned before, with some other friends and everything. So it was still afloat. But then I just had the idea that I'm keeping this afloat at this time right now. What's to say that it can't be repeated? You know, we're done in the same way. I mean, there's sports fans everywhere. There's social media everywhere around the country and the world so it's just like you know it's finding those people is the key part and then kind of just replicating what I was doing so I mean I was in Chicago at that time I had that base and even though I didn't know anyone it was a great way for me to kind of just get in front of people where I was just like hey I at the time looking back it must have been so annoying but this freshman kid going up to professors he hadn't really even had before and he's like hey I have this blog that's like doing this and that and they're like all right, like, I'll see you in class, like, whatever. And it was, yeah. it was this whole encounter at the time, and I, I honestly had no explanation behind it. And I was just crazy passionate about my teams at the time, 
how things were still going at the time, you know, it wasn't something that I was necessarily putting like a nine to five hours in, but it was, like I said, it was staying afloat and it was getting results. The following was still building. So, I mean, that's when I realized that something's happening here, you know, it's not just any kind of Twitter account there. There's, there's some kind of niche that we're building on here, niche that we're building on. All right, so we got to rewind a little bit. I never knew you went to the Loyola Chicago. Is yeah. This, is Sister Jean as big as people make it out to be, or is that, or is she kind of a, uh, I, a, a one-hit wonder and made it big this year? <laughs> I love to tell people that. I knew her before the fame and fortune, actually. I was uh, – <clears throat> excuse me. I was an orientation leader in between uh, – sophomore and junior summer they kind of give you the room and board and food and everything so I signed up for it and she's like obviously before all that March Madness stuff she was still kind of like the face of the school at the time so I mean at every orientation I was working with her literally greeting all these parents and everything I have a picture I can pull up somewhere and send to you guys but yeah I mean we, we've been homies since day one I like to say but Man, I can't believe, she I can't still believe remembers you, me at this point. I can't believe you've been holding all that information. I mean, we, you got to get us an interview with uh, Sister Jean. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I, I know it's a little after the fact, but I still think that that uh no, that I mean fame people still definitely there. still know the name. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, did she, all right, let, last Sister Jean question: Does she mm-hmm. does she still have that big red bump uh, back then, or the, on her face, or did that come later on? I, I think that was a little bit later on, just with all the hype and everything. People okay, kinda, okay lost track of what she was doing and where she was but all right so uh uh, obviously it's been a couple months that we've been on board with you guys Mm -hmm. um if i can instead of me pat myself on the back i'll let you do it what is something that made you guys kind of reach out to us where you know you guys have you know the philly site the chicago Mm -hmm. dallas when we're we're more you know national obviously like we're not huge or anything but we cover you know everything what what kind of made you guys reach out to us uh, I guess one of the biggest things that Josh kind of was the lead on is this effort on podcasts, you know, with the rise of Anchor and just a general awareness of how podcasts are becoming such a big thing now. He really pinpointed you guys from the start. He, I don't know how or where he kind of picked up on you, but it was just something that he saw you had done these interviews with professional people and it was just something that we knew we wanted to get on board on, a front that we kind of wanted to get ahead on since we had this social media as our bread and butter, and then we have blogs coming up behind that. But I feel like video and kind of podcasts were the element that we were missing. And you guys were already doing it perfectly. I mean, interviews and everything. We just had to get you to say a few words here and there. But then besides that, I mean, it was still the stuff you guys are doing. So it made it that much easier for us that much easier for you and then it made it as simple as we have it right now so yeah i i, I appreciate it man because we're we're not probably not the easiest people to work with we do this <laughs> if people knew how ghetto this podcast was i don't know if they'd listen but uh and and also does it uh now you ain't gonna hurt my feelings at all does it kind of get on your nerves a little bit when uh you see i'm tweeting out that breaking news bryce harper to the yankees <laughs> all but a done deal and i'm just Having Yankees fans attack me left and right, being a Yankee fan myself. <laughs> I, I think part of there has to be a different part of it where people see the humor in that. I mean, <laughs> just take one, no offense to you, obviously, but take one look at your account and it's just like it has what, 200, 300 followers? <laughs> yeah. Tweeting out this breaking news. Like people have to, that, all that fake news, like people have to look into what's being tweeting out stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure if they go like three tweets down on your timeline, there's like a joke about like some Giants player or something. So it's not like, yeah, man, Yankees fan. I, like I said, I, I'm a big Yankees fan, but they're, they're probably that's what. yeah, def- probably not the easiest year for them either with uh, the Red Sox do what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, all right, so. Uh, one last question, and then we're going to finish it off with a little game. Yeah. Uh, instead of me ask, asking what can we expect from Wagner in the future, uh, I know we, we have a big New York following, um, and I know we've talked about some things in the in the works, you know, of, of reaching New York. Uh, <laughs> what is something that, you know, maybe the New York listeners can expect from Wagner in, in the future? Uh, by the end of this year, I would say that we're going to have that New York's sports nation site live i'd say even by the end of this month honestly 
um, kind of been keeping under wraps just because I want everything to come out at once. But you heard it here first kind of deal. New York Sports Nation definitely coming very soon, along with Boston and D.C. by the end of the year. So get those all out. We're going to have that core seven. I like to think of it as from Philly, Chicago, Dallas, L.A., New York, Boston, D.C., and then kind of, you know, springboard from there, see what we can do. Definitely. So you mentioned Philly. That's where you started. That's the mm-hmm. team that you're all a fan of. Um, so we're going to play a little game, you know, because like you said, we want to cover the seven cities. We're going to play name yeah. that's name, name that city. All right. Are you, are you ready? Yeah. All right. First one, a person jumped into the penalty box in an NHL game and tried to fight a player. What city was that? Uh, Going to have to say D.C.? Oh uh, no that 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 was Philly. Oh, that was <laughs> All right, next next one. Uh, a NHL team was honoring a formerly deceased uh, man who was very involved in the team, and they gave out bands to every fan. Those fans or proceeded to throw all those bands on the ice. What city was that? What bands was it? Well, Sorry, it was like like, like, band, like, like bands you would put on your arm. Uh, oh, oh, I think. Um... Uh, what was it? Damn, you're hitting me with the NHL questions. <laughs> Is it one of the seven? Yeah. Uh, let's say Chicago. Nope that that was Philly. Uh, All right. Oh wow, really? Just <laughs> flying right over my head with them. Next, next one. Uh, an opposing mascot came for a away game, and was beat up twice in the same day, even putting him in the wheelchair for a little while. What city was that? Let me take a wild one here and say Philly. That, that is it. You're one for three, Ricky. You're doing uh, well. <laughs> I finally uh, cut on to the trend. Okay. All right. Fourth and final one. Let's see if you can hit 50 cent or 50% Shaq at the free throw line. At a baseball game, two friends were together and pretty intoxicated. One was kicked out for being unruly. The, the people who had them kicked out was a cop and his daughter and the two seats in front of them. The other friend who was allowed to stay decided to stick his finger down his throat, gag himself, and throw up on that cop and his daughter. What city was that? Philly. Oh, you got it, man. 50%. Congratulations, Ricky. Philly, Philly. You've done better than most of our, our trivia questions. We, uh, so you're, you're doing good, Rick. Thanks. All right. So uh, that's it, Ricky. We appreciate you coming on. We definitely want to have you again on the future. So everybody look out, you know, go to Wagon Enterprises. That's our host site. They put out stuff all the time. Follow them on all social media. And all our New York listeners, uh, pay attention. There's going to be some, you know, big news coming out in the next, you know, within the uh, end of the year. So, Ricky, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, have a good one, Ricky. See ya.